Hello everyone, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. I'm just going to give you a sneaky peek of the quilt that I'm working on for Ian's Halfway mind. through glue basting it um, and I ran out of glue, Ian's had to go and fetch me some more. So at the moment I've got the unbasted side, this side, rolled up and kept in with pegs. And then this side, which has been glue basted, um, all wrapped up out of the way. So this is how it's looking at the moment. I've got my quilty sandwich, which is my quilt top, which is what I've um, English paper pieced together. And then I've got my wadding or batting. And then I put fleece on the back. God knows how it's going to fit in the sewing machine. But um, I thought you might like a little peek of what I've been working on. Although it's not garment sewing, it still is um, obviously part of, <laughs> part of the sewing that I've been doing at the moment. And I'll show you it when I finish. What I'm wearing, it is a fibre mood mirror. And I think I showed it you on one of my, on my last So What's New um, vlog. And it's a tiered dress. Um, one of these loose ones and it's got these just ruffle sleeves and I like it very much. Oh and it's made from a tablecloth that I picked up at Tiger. I finished up buying four tablecloths. I'd actually been out fabric shopping with Rachel um, who is um, who vlogs that stitched up and I'd been so disciplined, we'd been so over it and raised stitch and I'd been like, I'm not buying anything, all this fabric is too expensive for me, even though it's beautiful, I'm going to be so good. And I dropped Rachel off at the tube and then I walked past Tiger and I thought, I'll just go in and see if they've got any fabric for sort of things. And um, I have to say I got this idea from Rosa who vlogs at Sewn and she's made beautiful dresses from tablecloths that she's got from Tiger. <laughs> they did have some tablecloths. They were a tenner each so they weren't the cheapest fabric actually because you get two meters on each one they are 100 no they're not 100 percent cotton they're poly cotton actually but they feel like 100 percent cotton they're not like thin poly cotton that you get for sort of dressmaking they're a little bit heavier um so i got the one that i'm wearing i got the same uh print in a different colorway i just think that's gorgeous the royal blue and pink yeah that's very nice and I got this one which nice hair clash and finally I got that one and I don't really like teal or turquoise but I kind of liked it when I held it up to myself I liked it with my hair so these are all destined to become um I think this is going to become a similar dress like this maybe an a-line type one with a, a with flared um with ruffled sleeves and these ones are destined to become shirt dresses. This is the shirt dress pattern that I'm going to be using. It is a um, vintage pattern, obviously. It's the envelope's absolutely knackered. Um, the view that I want to make is that one, and you can probably see better on that particular one. It's got a yoke and it's got little ruffles under the bust and I just really like the style of it. It's going to take a fair bit of uh, fitting because this pattern's a size eight. Um, can't remember where I got it from, probably uh, eBay, I sometimes buy job lots of patterns on eBay. Um, so yeah, this is a size 8 and I'm more like a vintage size 12, so I'm going to have to try and grade it up, but um, it should be nice. So I've also been doing um, a bit of sewing obviously, I need to get everything together for a makes video, but um, the dress behind me is a maternity dress from the 70s that I made up in this crazy yellow cotton from Abacan. There's a nice close-up of it and yeah I went um, rick rack crazy. That, that collar believe it or not is actually um, modified it's actually less winged and massive than the original was supposed to be so um, but I really like how it came out I mean it's a little bit um, silly but I think it's got humour to it um, I also started my pattern cutting course at Camden Working Men's College um, and it's been really good actually. It's a very sort of beginner's course and there's only five of us in the class and because of that the tutor who's lovely is able to pitch the course really at, at um, the kind of level that suits everybody. So there is a woman who's never sewn and she's an absolute beginner. She's kind of doing the course for interest really. She wants to know about 
how clothes are constructed and patterns are made and things. Um, and then there's a couple of other people who have done some more sewing. Um, so we're all getting quite an individual tuition really. Um, what we've been doing so far is mainly slashing and spreading, um, but I'm working from um, pre-drafted blocks. But we've been given quite a lot of reading to do and I've been um, obviously looking at the text textbooks at home and trying to build my own bodice block. And I'm in the process of that. It's just difficult getting it fitted because you need somebody to help you fit it. Um, and so it's a matter of persuading Ian to help fit my twirls on me. Um, but yeah, that's really fun. That's going really well. Um, it's only a five week course, but afterwards there's another module that we'll run on. And I think she's going to be looking at things like adjustments, full bust adjustments, um, high round back adjustments which might help me with some of the fitting issues that I've mentioned in previous vlogs so I'm really enjoying that at the moment. I also have been doing some voluntary work for The Socialists. If you don't follow The Socialists they have a blog at thesocialists.com which I shall link to in my downstairs and um, they're on Instagram at The Socialists I believe. Um, so they are an international blog um, which is basically about celebrating difference and diversity in the sewing community. I really, really love their ethos. They've got a really, really talented team of people who run the, the blog and they advertised for um, voluntary copy editors. Everybody's volunteers there. Um, they advertise for copy editors. And because in the past I've worked as a proofreader and I've done some copywriting, I volunteered and I've been really enjoying that. So mainly, um, if you read the blog, you wouldn't really see the work that I do because it's behind the scenes. It's basically just checking for areas, making sure that all the pictures are correct, all the links lead to the right place and, and everything, and just making sure that you you have a good reading experience. Um, I do love it. I love the content that's produced. Um, obviously, it is about diversity and inclusivity, but it's, it's a sewing blog, so it's about Make, making stuff, making clothes, and uh, it's great. If, you, if you're not familiar with Socialists, then have a look. I've also been um, really, really lucky enough to go on a couple of sewing meets. Last year, I was so poorly the whole year um, that I couldn't get to any, and I missed out loads, and I really felt a bit uh, left out of things, actually. And I think that I'm not the only person that feels that way. Um, not necessarily because um, people are all too poorly to get to places, but I think sometimes people are a little bit shy or maybe they don't live near anywhere where there's a sewing meetup. And I think that on Instagram, it's quite easy to see a lot of people chatting and all going out together and feel like everybody else is friends and you're on the outside. I know I certainly felt that way quite a lot of when I first um, joined the sewing community and started sewing. I'm really grateful to uh, Claire who is on Instagram as Claire Sews, who invited me out on a shopping trip to the Goldhawk Road. And it was really lovely to meet um, some sewing ladies there. And there were people who I didn't know, so it was really nice to meet some new sewing friends and um, chat about different things. I didn't stay too long because I find shopping super, super knackering. Um, but I did stay long enough just to have a coffee and to go around a couple of shops. Now, the Gold Talk Road for me, I find it a bit overwhelming. I don't know why, but I guess I'm a Walthamstow girl. I know where everything is. I know which shops I want to go in. And so I can kind of conserve my energy and go in the ones that I know I will like most of the fabrics there or be able to afford most of the fabrics there or whatever. Gold Talk Road is more of a... Um, well, they're shops rather than market stalls and... There's a lot more variety in terms of the cost of fabrics. They uh, don't just sell bolt ends like you might get at Walthamstow or Deadstock, um, which is where it's been manufactured for a maybe a ready-to-wear company and then they sell it off cheap, which is why you can get it super cheap. On Gold Talk Road, you're probably getting fabrics that have been manufactured specifically to be sold on um, in fabric shops. So it can be a bit more expensive. So I didn't buy very much, but I did snag this. And I just think it's so beaut. I think it's probably a little bit more green than it's showing up on camera. Um, it's showing up as quite aqua. But it's kind of, it's like a, like a vibrant mint green. Um, and it's denim. It's got just a little bit of stretch, not lots. And 
I thought I might use it to make myself a mint green Audrey seam work denim jacket. At the moment I've got all that cut out in just ordinary blue denim because I needed a new denim jacket. Um, so I'm going to sew that up next week and according to how well it fits me there are a couple of other fabrics I've got that I'd really like to make it up in as well because those cute denim ja jackets I just think you know you're going to wear them all summer long and probably can't have too many of them in different colours. Um, so that's what I think I'm going to use this for. Um, so that was a lovely meetup and if you ever feel like you want to come to meetups and it's any that I'm coming to you can always drop me a direct message and I'll always sort of try and make sure that I'm there to chat to you or that I can nominate somebody else to make you feel welcome because I know what it's like going into these these places where you feel like quite it can be quite intimidating when it's all strangers um so the other person that I had a little meet up with was uh, Meg who is at Pigeon Wishes on Instagram and also um does the Stitches Brew podcast um which is really great have a listen go and have a listen to the back podcast if you've not listened before um and we went to Rainbow Fabrics at Kilburn which is a real little treasure trove it's kind of a shop but it's a shop within like a covered market and if you look online you might think that um it, it'll be quite big but when you go it's just basically a small little shop that you just have to have a route through the fabric everything's all mixed up there are, isn't any sections you, you just get what you what is there um but everything is amazingly cheap and they have some lovely stuff and um quite a lot of it is well actually everything's drying on the line at the moment so but i'll show you a couple of things that i got um meg had already bought some of this and it's uh, twill but look at the color i just think that color is amazing it's just lovely and i think i might make some dungarees out of that or i might make another audrey jacket let's see let's see how my audrey experiment goes the one that i'm making um i like jackets to be cropped and finish up my waist um the audrey is designed to sit i think three inches below the waist so i'm i'm cropping it based on a cropped denim jacket that i've already got that's a little bit too big for me but i'm measuring the length of everything to try and get the length right but who knows i've heard a lot of bad things recently about seam work and how their patterns fit um, I haven't got a lot of experience with them so let me know in my downstairs um, how you get on with seam work patterns. Um, so I also found at Rainbow Fabrics this gorgeous, um, it's like a corally red um, and it's linen and it was £3 a metre which I just think is a total bargain. Um, it's still damp so <laughs> it's squidging all over my legs. Um, and beautiful Meg brought me some fabric which I thought was really really kind of her. She'd used this um, for herself to make herself something and she'd got a load left over and it is this gorgeous uh, Liberty style lawn, cotton lawn fabric. It's got a gorgeous drape and I love how the orange in it kind of picks out my hair uh, the other way around. I love how the my hair picks out the orangey bits and I don't know what I'm going to make with this but something that is a little bit sort of got some blues on um, to make the most of the drape of it because I just think that is really gorgeous and I think I think it was really sweet of her to think of me and bring me some fabric because we'd never met before and it was just one of those situations where you get to know it a little you get to know each other a little bit over Instagram and you chat and then um, because we don't live too far away from each other she said oh well you know if you're going to Kilburn then come and meet up and we went for coffee and I met her lovely boy Alimi and he was just a big snuggly bean and just slept and fed and slept and fed for the whole time which was super super sweet and we had just a really nice chinwag about all things sewing and life the universe and everything so that is pretty much what i've been up to um i've also filmed a review of my disastrous experience with my quick sew dungarees which you can have a look at next and i filmed a video recently about um, my disability but that's something that it's just there for you to have a look at if it interests you. I wouldn't by any means say it's about sewing. It's it's not really. It's just more about me and my life. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that today. I hope all your sewing projects are going really well. I'd love to hear about what you're sewing at the moment. Um, let's have a chat in the comments. If you've enjoyed this, please, please, please like and subscribe. I will love you forever. Mwah. See you soon. Bye.
Sorry, I'm going to have to shut the door. Somebody's banging outside.